How we doing everybody? Today we're going to be talking about making picture frames. Making picture frames can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. And there's a lot of really fancy stuff out there that people have created. Mine tend to be pretty simple and straightforward. My main goals are to showcase the thing that I'm trying to frame and then make the picture frame really nice and strong so it'll last a really long time. Now I'm not going to get into the details of sizes and dimensions of the materials I'm working with just because I tend to make picture frames out of scraps and things I have laying around. And if you're making a frame, maybe in the shop next year or at home, uh, whatever you're framing is going to be a different size than mine and the, material, the materials excuse me, you have available are likely going to be different than mine. So we're just going to kind of go through an overview of how I like to make them and then hopefully you can take that knowledge and apply it towards your own picture frame someday. The first step to making a picture frame is to mill up all the material that you're going to be using. I'm going to follow the milling procedure to make some nice rectangular pieces that I can turn into frame stock. During this process, I also put a rabbit in one corner of each of these frame pieces. I did that by just using the table saw. You could also use a dado set on the table saw or a router. There's lots of ways you could do it. Uh, I didn't show it on the video because I'm just pretty sure I just forgot to record it. My bad. All right, at this point I've created my frame stock, just the square material with a groove in it. So a picture frame to sit in for the back side. So now what I need to do is cut a 45 at the appropriate length. If I was real smart, I'd probably use a miter saw with a really fine tooth blade, uh, but I, I don't really have that set up right now, so I'm gonna be using a jig that I created. Uh, it's like the crosscut sled, but it's for cutting 45 degree angles. So we're gonna use that and start cutting out the lengths for a picture frame. members cut out. Now I'm going to sand the insides of these to remove any saw marks. The rest of it will be easy to sand later, but this part is really difficult to reach once you put the whole frame together. So I want to save myself some trouble down the line. Now it's time to assemble the frame. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each miter, but I don't want to have so much that I have a ton of squeeze out. This joint isn't going to be very strong, and I'm going to make it stronger later. So right now I just want it to stay together temporarily. I've got some 90 degree clamps, but there's lots of ways to put together a picture frame. At the school, we usually use a, like a ratcheting picture frame clamp. I prefer that over the setup I have at home, but I'm making do. Once I've got it pinned together in place with the 90 degree clamps, I put some proper F clamps across it, pull it in tight, and then I'm going to leave it there overnight. Alright, I've got my picture frame out of the clamps now, it's the next day. Uh, I want to be really careful with this though, because what I've done is I've only glued these corners together with a weak butt joint. A butt joint is like end grain to end grain in this case, and end grain to end grain is just about the worst way you could possibly glue something. I'm not planning on having this remain this way. Uh, if I just left the picture frame with these uh, end grain butt joints holding it together, it will fail eventually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice some miters in the corner uh, and create some keyed miters to make this a lot stronger. To do that, I've got this weird looking jig that I'm going to be using on the table saw to create some slots in these corners. And then I'm also going to have a, a thin piece of material uh, that I'll fit into those corners and glue it once more. That keyed miter is going to make the joint way stronger and it'll make my picture frame last a really good long time. Now I'm going to put in the keyed miters with some glue, throw a clamp on them, and they'll be ready to go the next day. Throw 
a little bit of sawdust underneath it so we don't get drips all over the floor and wait for tomorrow. All right, here we got our picture frame, almost ready to go. We're gonna take our uh, little keyed miters in the corners, we're gonna cut those down on the bandsaw, sand everything, break all of our edges, and spray some finish. Here we go. for some uh, fast drying poly... Oh, never mind the UPS guys here. This is awkward. Yeah, it just saw me talking to myself. That's awkward. Fast drying, fast drying polyurethane. The reason I'm using this today is because literally it was sitting in the cabinet and uh, it's what's on hand. So it's what we're gonna use. Um, make sure you're in a well ventilated area. My uh, filters for this stuff, for my dust mask, uh, have kind of died. So I'm out of mask filters, so I'll probably spray a little bit and then run off camera to get some fresh air and repeat the process till I'm done. So, here we go. couple more coats and we'll be in business. All right, here's my picture frame, about three coats of polyurethane on it. Really happy with how these corners turned out. They're very, uh, let's see if we can focus here, maybe we just can't. We can't. Okay, they're all Really nice, no gaps. It's one of my better ones, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we're gonna buff it out with some steel wool and we're gonna be done. Here we go. And there you have it. Picture frame. Done. Piece of art I just bought. Nicely framed and ready to be hung on a wall. I hope you enjoyed it. If you ever have any questions about making a picture frame, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. I'm happy to help.